Hokies are ranked seventh in the country, but this facility's not been kind to them. Tough year for Syracuse football. While they have won two in a row, they have only three from Butler, PA, Walter Reyes, and Chris Davis in the I formation. Quick throw by Nunes, and it is complete. Jamel Riddle. And Riddle with a fine play, runs into Virginia Tech territory, a gate of 12. So here comes a field goal attempt from 30 yards by Colin Barber, the sophomore out of Lexington, Kentucky. He is 6 of 12 on the year. His longest has been from 44 yards out. Here is the kick, and it is up, and it is good. So Syracuse on the board first, their first offensive possession, and they lead number seven, Virginia Tech. 3-0 as he nails it through. First and 10 from the 40, Randall wants to throw. And out there, and the grab is made. At the 35-yard line is Ernest Wilford, who brings the football down, the junior out of Richmond, Virginia. Working on Jameel Dumas, hits a pickup at 26 yards, and a first down for the Hokies. Option coming. Randall in trouble, and knocked down. Behind the line of scrimmage, it's a loss of three. Josh Thomas, the 6'7", 290-pound junior out of Orchard Park, New York. Third and five. Randall. Throwing the football into the end zone. Touchdown, Lee Suggs. A 15-yard strike from Randall to Suggs, and the Huggies are on the board. Mike Schaefer from his end zone and gets it away. High floating spiral. Richard Johnson will take it. And Johnson loses Fumble. the football. Syracuse has it. The Orangemen coming up with the football on the special teams. Lenny Cusimano finds the football. A 44-yard punt, a one-yard return, and the fumble. <laughs> Flea flicker for Syracuse, and Nunes throws it up in the air, and it's picked off. Picked off by Garnell Wilds, the right quarterback, and Nunes got smashed just as he released the football, putting it up for grab. But the issue here is with this flea flicker, they're not fooled. Number 28, Waxham, look at the ball coming up, up in the air. Wilds is able to come up, but he has to give a giant assist to number 28 for the Hokies. With the ball at the Virginia Tech 25 yard line. High formation now behind Brian Randall. Play action, Randall deep drop, firing across the middle man. Out there and the grab is made! Ernest Wilford, it's a foot race, he'll get into the end zone, touchdown! We had just talked about the fact that Gregory is gonna be on an island. Early on, he was able to take care of it. In this drive for Paul Pascaloni. Good opportunity here, second and short, to go play action. Do the unexpected. Pascaloni, the 11th winningest coach in the nation. 12th year, he's never had a losing year, 94, 45, and 1. And under a little bit of pressure here, a little bit of heat about this losing Why? season. Why? Coming off a 10-win season. One year. So we will see Colin Barber again. He is hit from 30 yards, and this will be a little less than that. It will be a 26-yard attempt. Here is Barber's kick. It is up, and it is good. So a 26-yard field goal by Colin Barber, matched with his 30-yarder, and Syracuse has six points, and it's Jeff King coming to the near side. Randall with time. Flushed out of the pocket. He'll fire long into double coverage. And it's intercepted. Picked off by Steve Gregory. So there's a little bit of comfort for Gregory, the freshman out of New York City. 25, who is a very, very good athlete. So Syracuse gets the football back. Second and 17. High formation behind Troy Nunes. And Nunes in trouble. Sacked at the 48 yard line by Tim Sandridge. Score is still 14 to 6, and that's the only one that counts. Vinny Burns is the punter. Jamel Riddle is deep for the Orangemen. Here comes the pressure. He got it tied. It's Tyree. It's Tyree who gets the block. And Syracuse with the football. David Tyree up with the football, up with the block, and here come the Orangemen. 
The reason we're so excited if you're at home is because David Tyree for two consecutive years, Frank Beamer pointed this out to us. They said Tyree has blocked a putt against us in 2000 and 2001. Now in 2002, he gets the trifecta. Take a look right in the middle of your screen. There he is, 81. Comes off and does a great job of going to the point of attack. So many times you'll see, watch number 81, cut inside. This is a poor decision on the part of 86 for the Hokies. That's Keith Willis, the tight end. You need to take the inside guy. Why not come in with wide receivers? Third and goal from the one yard line for Syracuse. The pitch, Reyes, cutting it in, touchdown. So they get the touchdown after the blocked punt. And Syracuse now cutting into that Virginia Tech lead here in the second quarter. Kevin Sampson and Matt Tarullo do an outstanding job on the right side of the line, enabling Reyes to get in the end zone. The idea is to get it. You're always trying to make up that one point. They're going to go with a double tight end set here of Cusimano and Donnelly. And Reyes, along with Chris Davis, are behind the quarterback, Troy Nunes. The two-point conversion on the way. Nunes running the option. And running into Virginia Tech and being spun down at the four-yard line by James Anderson. First and ten now from the 35-yard line. It's Brian Randall on the run, and it's almost it is picked off at the 35-yard line by the linebacker Rich Scanlon, who comes up with the football. Another Virginia Tech turnover. That's three. A very, very poor throw by Randall. He's made so many good ones, but this is awful. He pushes the ball to ease like the fullback. And look how far it is behind him. Oh. You can actually see the spin of the ball. It's fading a little bit. And watch the ball. Look at the ball. And look at the flip. You see how it's a little bit wobbly in terms of the spiral? Scanlon stays with it and comes up with a pick. I'm yeah. telling him to run because everybody sits right here on the field. They have a better view than the quarterback. A 47 yard. It's a fake. Nudes rolling in trouble and goes Vincent Fuller is there to knock down Nunes so after the interception they get nothing out of it. this is a bad decision for this reason coming into the game they had they had yet to make I believe it was something like one out of six outside of 40 yards so once they line up the long kick you know that's probably not going to happen Virginia Tech look you don't even see people laying out they're prepared for this everybody is covered and so instead of a missed kick where they might get back to the 30 35 yard line now the great job by Virginia Tech's defense being disciplined enough to stay with it. They sat noon. The result is great field position at midfield, a loss of 17 yards. So Frank Beamer likes that. You see the enthusiasm for it, Rams, in all of college football. First and 10 from the 49-yard line. And this is Randall in trouble, and sacked! Oh! Sacked by LaTroy Oliver coming through on the blitz to nail him in is a loss of 12 yards. One of the things that people forget about Frank Beamer, Oliver comes untouched, nobody can see him. Watch to the right of your screen, here comes Oliver, and there's no way for Randall to see him. He goes with the play action fake and looks downfield. Here he comes. Boy, that's a, that, whoo, that's a, <laughs> I'm telling you what, as a defensive player, that's a dream when you got your quarterback in your sights and he can't see you. Number three, had the other number three's number. With all due respect to Christian Okoye. Here's Nunes running the option. And too close to Rhodes. Ball is loose. Penalty marker flying at the 37. Virginia Tech has the football. They get the turnover, but now let's see what the penalty is. Billy Hardy up with the football. Well, I would appear the way, where it was thrown. I'm guessing that's got to be holding. Wow, what a break. How about that? Let's go to Reese Davis right now. Reese, what do you got going on? Second and short. Nunes wants to throw. Here comes the pressure. One hand and grab me by Rhodes. Rhodes to the 25. Look out. And knocked out of bounds is Damian Rhodes by Willie Pyle. It is a pickup of 23 yards of first down and a minute three left before the end of the half. This is a great call by George Elio and the offensive coordinator. They had not done this all day. This is the first screen. You know he's fading back to pass. The pass rush comes. That's a nice one-handed catch by Rhodes, but a better job by the people out front, enabling him to get downfield. Look at that. He wasn't touched until there was a good 20 yards downfield for the 33-yarder. Colin Barber now has hit two. Let's see if he can hit for three field goals in this game, and he misses it. It is wide right. 
So Syracuse gets nothing out of a fine drive. And for Virginia Tech, a little collective sigh. Easy to second guess Syracuse, but here is the issue. Maybe third and six from the shotgun formation. Randall across the middle, wide open to Sean Litton and put down, slammed by the tough man. Clifton Smith, the middle linebacker, a gain of three, and bring up fourth down. Sean Wooden, Witten, pleased to meet you. Here I am, Clifton Smith. <laughs> That's where running over the middle gets very dangerous. The number nine is waiting on him. Now he turns around. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, man. <laughs> It's second and seven, both receivers to the far side. Eye formation. Noons firing, and it's complete to Tyree. Tyree now with a foot race along the far sideline. And he stops and is brought down at the 15 yard line by Ronyel Whitaker. It is a gain of 55 yards for Syracuse offense. It occurs to me that everything that has happened good for Syracuse today. Whether it was a touchdown drive, or it was setting. Four wide receivers now for Syracuse out of the shotgun on third and 11. Here's Noons rolling, being chased and losing the football. But Syracuse came up with it. Adibi is the man who made the hit. hit. Heads up, though, on the part of Andre Fontenet, the wide receiver, to come back and get the ball. So many times when people are downfield, they don't see the play. Well, they have struggled. He has hit from 30 and 26, missed from 33 and 38, and then they faked one from 47. So this will be from 38 yards. Barber on the way. It is up, and it is good. So Syracuse has taken the lead. How close was that field goal? <laughs> Very close, but it is good. Almost overcompensated for that hook. It just went inside the left upright. And every field goal is like Mr. Toad's wild ride at, at Disney World. From Hoboken, New Jersey. On first and ten, Randall up top and a touchdown. Ernest Wilford. Again, it's Wilford, a 34-yard touchdown strike, his second of the afternoon. Is Virginia Tech going to respond accordingly? Obviously they are. Wilford, what a day for him. Four catches, 156 yards, and two touchdowns. Three wideouts now for Syracuse on first and long. Noons firing downfield, and the catch is made! What a catch by Joe Donnelly, the tight end. He's in Virginia Tech territory. A first down with a 25-yard pickup. The handoff is to Ray as Ray said, touchdown Orangeman. His second of the afternoon. Lenny Cusimano, the tight end, number 41, is, does a great job of hooking the outside back. Once Reyes cuts to the outside, there's nothing in front of him but AstroTurf and a lot of cheering fans. That's, That's his right. idiosyncrasy. Before he begins the drive to the hoop. Riddle and Tyree are to the right side on second and five. Play action for Noon, setting, looking, going long, and out there is Tyree. And Tyree making the grab. Wow. Tyree with a remarkable catch at the six-yard line for Syracuse. It is a gain of 52 yards, the stop by Roniel Whitaker. He had one earlier of 55 yards, this one of 52. And to be candid with you, I thought that Whitaker was going to close in plenty of time. Tyree with seven catches, 154 yards. Here is Reyes, right side. Reyes into the end zone. Did he get there? Yes. Touchdown, Syracuse, his third of the afternoon. And the upset is beginning to have more credence. Notice this too, Jeff. Notice that every time they ran for a touchdown, and all three of his touchdown runs, they have gone to the right side of the offensive line. That's Cusimano, Sampson, Terulo, and Romeo have done a very, very good job of scampering into the end zone and finding six. Now Colin Barber. The hold and the snap, and the kick hits the crossbar. 
and it is no good. And that's huge. Mm. Remember earlier in the season against Temple, they tied the game, or thought they had tied the game with about 50 seconds left. Same thing, missed the extra point. That's gigantic in terms of seven points. Boy, ever. Down and four. Three wide receivers. Here's Randall. In trouble. And Randall is sacked. And getting no. rid of the football to Lee Sucks. He was able to get away with it. You know what? I'm not sure he was able to do that. It occurred to me now the ball is fumbled. What's the call? Now the side judge is saying over on the other side that the fumble evidently is down. And the Orangemen say they have the football. How are they going to sort this out? They're going to have a discussion. They say the fumble. So it is a fumble, and Syracuse gets the football. Frank Beamer can't believe it, and it's time for Joe Paterno to come in and argue with the refs. <laughs> but let's give credit to Randall. Randall understands that it's fourth down. It makes no sense for him to take the sack. See if you can find somebody or bounce. Can they get their fourth victory of the season? Virginia Tech with the football. Randall wants to throw. Firing, and the catch is made. Ernest Wilker. Wilker on his way. That's it. He will score. Ernest Wilford is third touchdown catch of the day, an 87-yard catch from Brian Randall. So I guess that conversation we're going to have about how Virginia <laughs> Tech's offense is going to respond after Syracuse, man, oh, man. He's got seven catches, 293 yards. All right, so you start thinking about an upset there as well. Here it's tied at 28. Here's Reyes running hard. In Virginia Tech territory by the Nigerian Nightmare, Nathaniel Adibi. It's a 29-yard pickup, and Reyes is down. Right at the end of the play, you saw him land very hard on his knee. He's holding his knee. That's one of the disadvantages of AstroTurf. Right at the end of the play, you, you'll get a chance to see it here on the replay. It hits very hard. Reyes with that carry well over 100 yards now as opposed to having pulled something. But that, that in and of itself right there is not a good sign. He's not putting any weight on, it, on his leg at all. A new school record on first and 10 from the five for the Hokies. Play action, Randall from his end zone across the middle. And it's caught! Caught by Keith Willis. Now a foot race for six. Can they catch him? Yes. Brought him down from behind, Maurice McLean, and it is a gain of 84 yards. And Todd, you called it about finding some room in the defensive backfield of the Orangemen. It has been an absolute nightmare for the defensive backs of Syracuse. Second and goal from the five. Quick throw, Randall up top. Wow, man, a touchdown! Catch. Guess who? Ernest Wilford, his fourth touchdown catch of the afternoon. No stopping him in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Frank Beamer, a man who prides himself on special teams, not terribly happy that they just handed the 35-yard line to Syracuse. Riddle and Tyree come to the near side on first and 10. Play action, Noon steps up, and it's caught by Tyree. Look out! David Tyree trying to stretch towards six. And out of bounds, inside the five, it's a 62-yard catch. Roniel Whitaker ran him out. This is like a duel between Tyree and Wilford. This route has been Noon's 22 of 35, 385 yards. Now, you asked earlier, where do they miss Reyes? This is certainly a place, but it's not going to matter. Reyes is going to take it in anyway. Damian Rhodes for six. Here I was all set to tell you, you know what, Jeff? It's going to be a problem. Rhodes isn't as strong. Instead, his 4-3-8 speed gets to the outside. And let's pay attention to this extra point. Like the Navy commercial, it's not just a job. It's been an adventure for them. Colin Barber is like a golfer who's hooking his drives. How about 868 yard combined in the passing department? A to attempt a change. And Mike Schaefer, the punter. Here is the point after attack, and it is good. <laughs> you thought it would be the overtime field goal win. Look at that. Not now. Not now. 
If you, <laughs> their strength today is throwing the football. That's not Frank Beamer. Schaefer just gets it away, and they hit it. And the penalty. Never mind that it takes a great Syracuse bounce. And the dreaded no-brainer. Uh, Jordan Trot hits the punter, Mike Schaefer. A 58-yard punt. I, I, frankly, I don't understand that. Frank Beamer is one of the great coaches in the United States, but that was an egregious decision right there. You have your guy stand at about the 40-yard line, Running fair catch it. On the defense, the penalty is five yards. Result of the foul, first down. All right, Stacy, second and seven now. And the clock, a huge factor. High formation now for Nunes. Throwing, and it is off. Intercepted, is it? Yes! Intercepted by Garnell Wiles, his second interception of the afternoon, and it comes with a minute seven left in the ball game. And for a reason I don't understand, the connection between Nunes and Riddle has been just a little bit quick. He threw the ball a little bit too soon. Riddle couldn't come up with it. We talked about Wiles and the fact that he was replacing D'Angelo Hall and that he would get picked on. This ball's wobbly and a little bit early. Look at the concentration by Wiles to make the catch and hang on to it. Number 17, getting picked on, but now that's his second interception of the day. What tremendous concentration. His career long is from 47. This to break the tie to get number seven Virginia Tech a three-point lead and maybe the game. Here's the kick. And it is no good. No good. So we remain tied at 35. Damian Rhodes is out, Johnny Morant is in. On third and five, three receivers, two to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation for Nunes. Now coming back the other way into the end zone, picked off. Picked off by Garnell Wilds, his third interception of the ball game. And I'm telling you right now, he absolutely did not see him. Nunes did not see Wild. The idea was you had crossing route. Nunes. Wishes, oh, he wishes he had that back. The idea is here to the left. Now he's going to come back and break. He sees the receiver who falls with him, but Wilds comes off his man. Just waiting, he kneels down, and Nunes goes, oh, no, 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 that was not the throw to make. A 35-yard attempt coming by Carter Worley for number seven Virginia Tech to escape the Carrier Dome in New York. Kick is up and it is no good. Push to the right. Syracuse lives. It's five touchdowns, two pass interceptions. Second and 11. Brando going for six. And penalty marks in the fun. end zone. Yep. Latroy Oliver, the left cornerback working on Terrell Parham, and that'll go against the Orangemen. One of the things that Syracuse defensively has been painfully predictable with is when they blitz. And every time that they blitz, they've had single coverage, and that's a big chunk of those 500 yards of which you made reference to earlier of the results. Pass interference on the defense. The foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be placed on the two-yard line. First down, Virginia Tech. Watch the blue shirts. Everybody's coming. They're coming with seven guys. Once again on an island, Oliver doesn't turn around soon enough. The official has to call that, and because it is in the end zone, they'll have the ball on the two-yard line. Oliver, the senior out of Hartford, Connecticut, 5'7", 195 pounds. Two tight ends. Full back there. On third and goal from the two. Option. Great call. Brandon keeps the football. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. So Brian Randall has done it in the air this afternoon and does it on the ground in the second overtime. We called it on second down in anticipation that they might do it then. Now that's a great call on third down. They have not optioned for the longest time. They need some points. They've got fourth and three. They can get the first down without getting the six. 
Noons looking into the end zone. Touchdown! Joe Donnelly, the tight end, makes the grab. Remember, Donnelly was the one earlier that had that fabulous catch on the corner out where he fell flat on his back. The throw by Noons is a dart, but it's actually a little bit behind him. Number 40 makes a terrific catch, reaching back on fourth down to come up with a touchdown. Mike Schaefer to tie up the ball game. The kick is up and it is go. So the overtime continues. Number seven, Virginia Tech and Syracuse all knotted up at 42. Your decision making when it comes to what you want to do offensively. I don't think so. And the give is to Damian Rhodes. with a great block from Kevin Sampson, opened the door for six. We just talked about the youngster. If there's going to be a game that's going to set him apart, this could be it, and that run could be it. It looks, for all intents and purposes, early on like it's a busted play. He fakes the pitch to him, and then he comes back against the grain. That's a play that they have not run all day long. Virginia Tech completely split to the right side. Rhodes and Davis in the eye formation. Here comes the option and the pitch. Rhodes wants to throw it out, coming back the other way. He has room, taking it to the outside, a split to the end zone. Got it. He got just enough of a block from his quarterback to take it in. A piece of the guy to enable him to get in for six. All right, here Two. comes Virginia Tech. On first and ten, pumps once, now going up top is Randall, and it is intercepted! That's your ball game! Syracuse has upset number seven Virginia Tech in three overtimes. Remember, Maurice McLean was the one that got burned by Willis, the tight end down the middle of the field. This seems to be one of those days, Jeff, where guys make mistakes, and then they're able to atone for their mistakes later on. The ball is a little bit wobbly. They finally have safety help. McLean is over on the double team. He leaps. He denies Wolford the touchdown, hangs on, and realizes it's embedded in his chest that Syracuse has its precious fourth win of the season. The scene on the field <laughs> resembles a team that has just won the Big East and is on their way to a bowl. But that's not the case, their fourth win. But nonetheless, a tremendous victory for Syracuse. Coming up next is Colin. Thanks to God, because I, I asked, I prayed right before it happened. I said, give us a victory, and he gave us our first thing to him. Then my, I think my offense alive, and the defense give me a chance. But when I saw the end zone, I was just like, I got to get in. As a freshman, that run very well could have set you apart from so many other athletes, and then you ran it in for two. Did you expect to get that score as well? The play was designed for that, but it just happened, so I did what I could to try to help our team. And most importantly, your boy Walter went out today. Talk about what he means to this team. Talk about Walter as he stands here beside you. 
If it wasn't for Walter, we wouldn't have been in, a lot of us wouldn't be in this game. Walter took me under my wing when I got here, and I give a lot of credit to him because if it wasn't for him, I don't know how good I'd be doing without him. Walter's the best back in the squad, baby. All right, Walter, I hope you get feeling better soon. Thank you. Just looking.